Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Mia Tiffany and welcome to the Tiffany Club where we are rediscovering some of the greatest classic films throughout history. Today we are continuing our journey with Alfred Hitchcock and his film Rear Window. Before we jump in, I would like to shout out my Golden Oscar patrons. Thank you all so much for your continuous support of the channel. And if you're interested in becoming a VIP member, the link is in the description box below. Rear Window was released in 1954, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, starring Grace Kelly and James Stewart, with other notable performances by Wendell Corey and Thelma Ritter. All right, on to a quick synopsis of the film. It says, a wheelchair-bound photographer spies on his neighbors from his apartment window and becomes convinced that one of them has committed murder. Ooh. This sounds exciting. Um, I'm very excited to get into this. So at this point, we are going to get into some historical background. For those of you who want to jump right onto the film reaction, go for it. But for those of you who want to stay, we're going to get right into it. Rear Window had originally been a story titled It Had to Be Murder, written by William Irish, a.k.a. Cornell Woolrich, in 1942. Shortly after the story's publication in Dime Detective magazine, the film rights were sold to theater director Joshua Logan and producer Leland Hayward. So this was to be Logan's screen directorial debut, but before he even had the chance, the film rights were sold to Hitchcock by agent Lou Wasserman. So once Hitchcock got his hands on the film rights, he partnered with radio writer John Michael Hayes to develop a screenplay. While writing the script, Hitchcock expressed to Hayes that he wanted to focus not only on the two lead characters of the story, but also the actors who were to play them. So because of that, he told Hayes to write the characters with the intention of James Stewart and Grace Kelly playing in their respective lead roles. Rear Window would go on to be nominated for four Oscars at the 27th Annual Academy Awards. Okay, on to some interesting facts. So while researching this film, I came across a copyright infringement lawsuit involving this film and a film from 2009 called Disturbia, which was directed by DJ Caruso. Allegedly, in 2008, the Sheldon Abend Revocable Trust, who were the owners to the rights of the original publication of It Had to Be Murder, claimed that Steven Spielberg stole their story to create Disturbia. Now, one of their claims was involving this film, Rear Window, saying that Hitchcock had gone about the correct process to obtain rights to create a film from the original publication. However, Steven Spielberg did not. So because of that, they decided to sue Spielberg, DreamWorks, Viacom, and Paramount Pictures for allegedly stealing the original work of what ended up being Rear Window. Ultimately, the judge ruled that while there were similarities between the projects, Disturbia wasn't in any sort of violation with the US copyright laws. And for that reason, the Sheldon Abend Revocable Trust did not win that lawsuit. I think honestly, it was just a sort of happenstance where two movies kind of seemed similar. And so, you know, somebody was trying to get money out of it, <laughs> but it didn't work out, you know, so. Anyway, with that being said, this is my first time watching Rear Window and I'm super excited because again, this is another James Stewart film. We are getting our James Stewart fix this month, which is like a dream come true for me. <laughs> so I'm very excited to get into this, but before we do, I do have something that I need to address with all of you. So I was going through the analytics on the channel and I noticed that a large portion of you are not subscribed, which is fine. Hey, I get it. Sometimes you kind of forget, you get excited, and you want to go on to the next video and you forget to hit the subscribe button. Totally fine. Totally get it. I'm going to give you a chance to right now. So please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification to stay in the loop. All right, everyone, it is time to grab your snacks, grab your drinks, and let's get into Rear Window. Ooh, interesting music choice in the beginning. I kind of like that it's like jazzy. Oh, and we're seeing Thelma Ritter again. I am so excited. I really loved her in The Misfits. She was fantastic. And then of course, Grace Kelly. I mean, that's like a given, you know? Oh wow, you really get like all these people. <laughs> like you see everything that everyone is doing. I feel like that is literally like no privacy almost. <laughs> I always forget this, okay? We're looking for Alfred Hitchcock. I just, I always have to say that because I always forget to do it. There's James Stewart. 
That man is literally sleeping on his on his terrace. Wow. Oh my goodness. Is she just getting ready with the window wide open? Oh no, boo boo. I need some sort of privacy, you know? Here lie the broken bones of LB Jeffries. <laughs> Interesting negative there. Ooh. Oh, that's like the original negative that he shot and then it's on the magazine. That's sweet. So he's like a distinguished photographer. Congratulations, Jeff. We're getting rid of that cast. Next Wednesday, I emerge from this for another whole week. So he's well, kind of like a peeping week, Tom almost. Like <laughs> I feel like Hitchcock really loves blondes. He uses blondes a lot. If you don't pull me out of this swamp of boredom, I'm going to do something drastic. <laughs> like what? Like what? I'm going to get married and then I'll never be able to go anywhere. I feel like it'd be really cool to kind of see into the lives of other people, even though it's kind of creepy because you're literally sitting there staring at other people, like stalking them almost. But it would be kind of interesting. Like that for me would be like a kind of an interesting pastime. Well, maybe in the high rent district they discuss. In my neighborhood, they still nag. Yeah. Well, uh, you know best. She is nagging him. Like, what are you? You are late. What have you been doing at the office? Wow, these people are really, like, their proximity, like, the proximity in this film is really close. It almost feels like, like, different from Vertigo, which felt like there were a lot of scenes that were very isolating because of the, like, the use of, of the space in the scenes. This feels very claustrophobic, and, like, everyone is in a this close proximity with each other. So it's like you're constantly in other people's business, you know? A New York State sentence for a peeping Tom is six months in the workhouse. Oh, hello, Stella. You know, in the old days, they used to put your eyes out with a red-hot poker. <laughs> it's Thelma Ritter! She is like an absolute queen. What people ought to do is get outside their own house and look in for a change. Amen. Yes, sir. How's that for a bit of homespun philosophy? James Stewart is showing a little bit more skin in this one. I know it's like, it's very little, right? Because this is the 50s, so how much skin can they really show? But I'm noticing it, just, it's really, like, all over the place in this film. Lee's a free one. I mean, she expects me to marry her. She's too everything but what I want. Get out of my life, you perfectly wonderful woman. You're too good for me. I love Thelma Ritter. She takes these characters and she makes them her own. So it's so believable that, like, she's this certain character. When a man and a woman see each other and like each other, they ought to come together. Wham. Lee's is loaded to her fingertips with love for you. Marry her. He's thinking too much. He's thinking too much. Just marry her. If you got a good one, you gotta keep them because they slip through your fingers real quickly. Oh, a new couple is moving in. That's so sweet. Oh, he's... He's taking her over the threshold. That's so sweet. They must be like newlyweds. Mm-hmm. Look, he's looking... <laughs> She's like, we have some, we have some company. It's really cool to see how he kind of plays around with sensuality and physicality in this film. And it's very apparent too. I think it's really refreshing just watching it as someone from 2021. I also like the fact that he's incorporating like heat. Like you can tell it's hot obviously because all these people are like glistening with sweat. But the heat adds on to the, the stifling like claustrophobia of the film which I really, I think is really brilliant. Oh my God, it's Grace Kelly. Grace Kelly in color, no less. Ooh, romantic. How's your leg? It hurts a little. Oh, I love that. That close up was a, was a really good idea too. What would you think of starting off with dinner at 21? Their eyes are all so oh, piercing. I'll take the one. Like the blue of their eyes are so like crystal what blue. What do you think, Mr. Jeffrey? I wonder if it has something to do with like the theme of the film, you know? Um, I don't know, but it it's they're like very apparently blue. Isn't it time you came home? You mean leave the magazine? Yes. But I could see you looking very handsome and successful in a dark blue flannel suit. Gosh, she looks like a princess, guys. I know she was, but she literally looks like one. I guess I'd better start setting up for dinner. Hmm. You can tell that she loves him very much and he's very hesitant, like he's closed. And I see you Dang, he is so nosy. <laughs> 
But I can't even blame him because I'd be the same way. I'd be like, what's she doing? Who's she making dinner for? Oh, someone's coming. Um, there's nobody there. Maybe she's just practicing for when her company comes. Oh, no, she's definitely not practicing. She's literally talking to nothing. That is entertaining. <laughs> it would be the same way. I feel like if you're gonna do something like weird like that, you should close your blinds because you look like, you kind of look a little strange. Oh, maybe she's missing someone, you know? Miss Lonely Heart. Well, at least that's something you'll never have to worry about. Oh. Someone who she wanted to show up in her past and just never did. Poor thing. I feel bad now. Oh. She like threw the rose. I feel like this would be really interesting to be on set of this film, kind of watching Hitchcock direct these actors, you know, without dialogue, using more of their nonverbals, and how he was able to kind of orchestrate this, these different scenes going on. I think that would have been really interesting to watch in real time. Ooh, something's happening. <laughs> She's getting a little suspicious. She's like, who are you talking to? Jake from State Farm? <laughs> Do you guys know that commercial? That's what I thought of. <laughs> so we can tell that she definitely doesn't, I feel like she belittles him. Is that Hitchcock? Oh yes it is. <laughs> That was pretty obvious, that one. Oh my god, that's so cool. It's almost as if it were being written especially for us. No wonder he's having so much trouble with it. But at least you can't say the dinner isn't right. It's perfect, as always. Maybe she's just like, I mean, he said it, like she's too perfect for him. I don't even understand what that means. <laughs> I don't care what you do for a living. Couldn't we just keep things status quo? When am I going to see you again? Not until tomorrow night. I respect that. I, I understand both both sides of their of the coin there. Okay, shady man wearing shady things, holding a shady briefcase. Where could he be going at nearly 3 a.m. in the morning? Maybe they're going like a trip or something. Or it could be his wife's body chopped up into little pieces in that briefcase. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> it's a doggy. Oh, it kind of looks a little fox. It's so cute. He looks suspicious. That's a kind of a look a man gives when he's afraid somebody might be watching him. I feel like if you were going to commit murder in this apartment complex, it would be the worst apartment complex to commit murder in because literally everyone can see you. I've actually lived in an, in an apartment complex similar to this and you can see everyone and everything. Like this is the worst place to commit a murder. Oh, he's like cleaning his briefcase. And don't sleep in that chair again. Great conversationalist. <laughs> I love her. I wonder how she was as like a real, like how she was in real life. That would have been cool to meet her. He's selling jewelry, his wife's jewelry. Cause she's not gonna need it anymore. Oh no, he is way too suspicious. And the fact that he's tall just gives him like that scarier appeal. I don't trust him. <laughs> oh, he's got that like super lens. <laughs> he's gonna do some high key Tom peeping right now. I mean, way to be inconspicuous, right? Like, imagine you're just like looking out your window and you see this man with this ginormous camera lens taking photos of you. Oh, he's... Oh, those are knives. Though now I feel like it's too easy, okay? Because now they're alluding to him do committing a crime. So now I'm like, mm, I feel like something else is at play. I could be wrong, though. Oh, and also we did see him walk out with a woman. I remember that. So his wife could have just gone on like a, like a trip or something. I don't know. I love how all of these neighbors' stories are being told through nonverbals. The fact that they're using a lot of Nonverbals and proximity and gestures really does convey the, the small stories of these neighbors. She just let her dog be out all day without any supervision. That is a pretty loyal dog though to come back 
And I don't even think it has like a collar on it. Why would a man leave his apartment three times on a rainy night? That's where his wife welcomes him home. No, no. Why hasn't he been in his wife's bedroom all day? She's like, why are you talking about... Why aren't you focused on me? <laughs> Just how would you start to cut up a human body? She's like, are you serious? Shut. He's coming back. If I may... Oh my god, he's holding a rope. Okay. First of all, it is alluding way too much to him being, like, a murderer. I feel like he's not the one that they should be worried about. I think it's that couple that closed their, their windows because I feel like they have something to hide, you know? I don't know. Could just be me. It's just a theory. What makes you think there's something the matter with A lot her? of things. She's an invalid. She demands constant care. Yet neither the husband or anybody else been in to see her all day. Why? There's something that happens with these, with Grace Kelly and James Stewart. It's like harmonious. Like, um, neither one is like hogging the spotlight more. It's just like a beautiful pairing. A, a murderer would never parade his crime in front of an open window. Exactly. Why not? See, she's rational. But for all you know, there's probably something a lot more sinister going on behind those windows. Is that not what I said? I'm telling you, it's the couple that have their shades drawn. That could be anything. Okay, but he did roll up the bed and it looks a little Stop shady. Tell me everything you saw. She's already convinced. No, I still think it's the couple that have their shades drawn. I think he's just boarding up his house because his wife went somewhere. The name on the second floor rear mailbox reads Mr. and Mrs. Lars Thorwald. Okay, Chief, what's my next assignment? Let's go home. I think she would be, she is perfect for him. And if he does not marry her, then I don't even know. I don't even get it. I don't even know. You better get that trunk out of there before it starts to leak. <laughs> it's been close since they came in. Oh, there we go, okay. He looked a little, a little annoyed, I'm telling you. They're looking at the wrong house. Signing papers, it really could be anything. We don't even know. They are jumping to conclusions. I thought Doyle would be here by the time the trunk left or I'd call the police. Now we're going to lose it. Hold everything. Well, don't do anything foolish. I'm just going to get the name off that freight truck. I'll keep an eye on the alley. It could be her belongings. Maybe she went to like a hospital or something. Shh. They left before she could get him. Uh, it's too obvious and stupid for you to commit murder in full view of 50 windows. That's what I said. That's what I'm saying. Cigar waiting for the police to come and pick him up. Oh, I'd officer do Exactly. It is way too obvious. You think I made all this up? Oh, I think you saw something. There's probably a very simple explanation to it. You're aware of, along with hallucinations. I'm literally on the side of this man. Like, I feel like it's just too obvious. It's too obvious if that he committed a crime. Oh, shoot, that dog's in his roses again. And he's gonna go off. Get along. Mm-hmm, now the man's suspicious too. You know what I love about these characters? <laughs> At first, they're like, that's absurd. He didn't commit crime. It's so obvious. And then in like a second, they're like, but wait a second, maybe he might have. And they get all suspicious and start learning more about this man. <laughs> Kept himself. None of his neighbors get close to him or his wife. Yeah, well, I think they missed their chance with her. She never left the apartment. Where is she? yesterday morning. Box. What time? 6 a.m. We did see her leave, but it could have been a decoy too. See, now I'm questioning it. Oh, I almost forgot there was a... Postcard in Thorwald's mailbox. It was message went, arrived okay, already feeling better. Love, Anna. Honestly, I feel like, I feel like he's looking at the wrong window. I love the hermits. They never get out of their house. They just let their dog roam around. But that dog is so loyal. He just comes right back. This woman. I love her green, her green outfit. Gosh, green and red really is just a combo, right? Especially in an Alfred Hitchcock film. <laughs> I kind of want to know more about her story though. She feels, I feel like she's really sad. Wow, she has a lot of room in that apartment. It looks so small, but she sure has a lot of room to do all that dancing. Interesting choice of music at the same, also. Oh. Okay, some new shirts. Really crisp looking shirts. I don't feel like he's suspicious at all. Sure, he was, you know, unboxing some knives and doing some shady things at 3 a.m. 
But I don't think he's a bad guy. Ooh, a purse. Long distance again. How does he know that from that far away? A ring. Maybe he could be doing shady stuff, but it's not like murder. Maybe it's like, like theft or, or fraud or something else. And that's why he kind of seems shady. I don't think he murdered his wife, though. <gasps> he could. What if he's cheating on his wife while she's away? Doesn't seem to be in any hurry. Uh, he's been laying out all his things on one of the beds. He had his wife's jewelry in the handbag. I mean, the wife did look like she was like belittling him or like something of that nature. So maybe he fell in love with someone else. Women aren't that unpredictable. A woman has a favorite handbag. It always hangs on her bedpost where she can get at it easily. Exactly. You always have your handbag with you. That does make sense. God, I'm so, like, torn. Women don't keep their jewelry in a purse getting all twisted and scratched and tangled up. Well, they hide in their husband's clothes. They do not. A woman's intuition. And they don't leave it behind, either. I just feel like because this whole month, we've just been thrown off our rocker with different these different Hitchcock films, I don't feel like he killed his wife. I feel like that's too easy. Like there's something else there. But then again, it could surprise me. I don't know. This is a suitcase? Well, a Mark Cross overnight case anyway. I'll trade you my feminine intuition for a bed for the night. We see her really evolve into this woman that is so multifaceted and you know, very in intuitive and and um, very adaptive. I really, really love that in her character. I don't trust this couple right here. There's something about this. You see how he reacts when his wife calls him? I'm telling you, there's something there with that couple. What else have you got on this man for? Jeff, aren't you going to tell him about the jewelry? It was in her favorite handbag. Well, it's simply that women don't leave their jewelry behind when they go on a trip. Knowing what I know about Hitchcock, I'm like, mmm, I just can't stop feeling like something else is gonna happen. I, it could just be me. You mean to say you can explain everything that's gone on over there and is still going on? What about the knife and the saw? He could have been selling them. Do you ever own a saw? How many people did you cut up with it? That's true, that's true. He does make a valid point. You don't just go around cutting up people with knives. And if she wasn't coming back, why didn't he tell his landlord? I'll tell you why he didn't tell his landlord, because he was hiding something. Do you tell your landlord everything? Were they not allowed to have, like, visitors over? It's, it's really seeming like she's not allowed to be there without the landlord knowing or something like that. So were they not allowed to have, like, visitors of the opposite sex over over the night? Is, is that what I'm kind of getting? I don't know. I truly honestly don't know. Who was that trunk addressed to? Uh, Mrs. Anna Thorwald. Well, then let's wait and find out who picks it up. They reported the trunk was just picked up by Mrs. Anna Thorwald. Now I feel like maybe he did do something with his wife because that was too obvious too. Like him not committing the murder is now becoming as obvious as him committing the murder. So I don't even know what to think now. Now I'm like, I'm totally at a loss. <gasps> oh my God, she found a man. I've kind of been rooting for this woman in the green, honestly. Oh, he seems like a nice guy, too. He's kind of young, isn't he? Oh, I, I was thinking the same thing. He's a little young. Uh-oh, put down them lines, baby. She's like, please get out. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. Um, is should we help her? Get off of me. Poor thing. Dating is not easy, all right? It's just not an easy thing. You don't know who you're bringing into your house. That looks so cute, but it also looks so comfortable. <laughs> Yes, I like it. The dog. Something happened with the dog. Something happened with the dog. Oh my god. It's dead. The, the dog could have fallen. Neck oh, the neck was broken. The only thing in this whole neighborhood who liked anybody. And the only person who would have a vendetta against that dog is um, Lars. Because that dog kept like digging in the roses. That does look pretty bad. That looks pretty suspicious. You know, for a minute, that Tom Doyle almost had me convinced I was wrong. In the whole courtyard, only one person didn't come to the window. Look. That's true! It was Lars. He did not come to the window. Why would Thorwald want to kill a little dog? The roses. Because it knew too much. 
It was the roses. That looks super suspicious. Now I'm being convinced. Did he kill his wife? I think I know why Thorwald killed that dog. Right, the, those two yellow zinnias aren't as tall as they were. Now, since when do flowers grow shorter in two weeks? That is such a subtle change. How was he able to see that? I would not have caught on at all. So that must mean that something is buried there. I'm not going to call Doyle until I can produce Mrs. Thorwald's body. What we've got to do is find a way to get into that apartment. Well, Stella, get this note paper. It's up here someplace. I still don't feel like he killed his wife. I'm still on that. I mean, yes, the evidence is intriguing, but I just don't feel like he killed his wife. Lars Thorwald, what have you done with... What have you done with her? Wow, his handwriting is actually really good. I know this is super random, but I love seeing, like, um, celebrities do, like, mundane things, like writing on a piece of paper or, like, doing other things that normal people do. It's just, for some reason, it's just so cool to watch. It's so random right now. God, I don't know why he sent her. That was not a good idea. Because if she's spot, then she, then she's a suspect, you know, to, to the bad guy. Hurry up and run away. Hurry up. Ooh. Hurry up, girly. <gasps> did you see how close he was to spotting her? Oh my god. You did it, Thorwald. You did it. Oh my god, I love this scene. The choreography of this scene is so, like, spot on. Miss Lonely Hearts just laid out something that looks like rhodium triagonal capsules. Well, you can tell from here. Oh my god, please don't tell me she's gonna try and do something to herself. Well, what was his reaction? I mean, when he looked at the note. Well, it wasn't the kind of an expression that would oh get him god, a quick look, 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 he's at the looking at her! Jeff the handbag. That was the look that- that was a look that's like, ah, uh, this one's a keeper. Let's go down and find out what's buried in the garden. Oh, wait, hold on. Jeff, if you're squeamish, just don't look. Squeamish? Maybe I can get him out of that apartment. We only need a few minutes. I feel like this is going to crash and burn. This is not a good idea. Leave this man alone. We scared him once. Maybe we can scare him again. Well, I guess I'm using that word we a little freely. I mean, so you're taking all the chances. Huh? <laughs> Shall we vote him in, Stan? Also, this woman is literally like... She could possibly be trying to hurt herself. Why aren't we trying to help her? Come on, pick it up, Thorwald. Hello? <gasps> Did you get my note? Who are you? Who are you? I'll give you a chance to find out. <sighs> I'm getting so nervous. I don't even know, like... I just think they should just leave him alone. I don't know what you mean. Now come on, quit stalling, Thorwald, or I'll hang up and call the police. Oh, my God. I'm at the Albert now. I'll be looking for you. I feel so bad for Lars, guys. Like, what if he didn't commit murder and they're just stringing this poor man on a freaking wild goose chase? Why is he getting a flash ready? Oh, to signal them, like, if he's coming back. Got it. This is a really freaking bad idea. But I think one good thing out of this is that we really see... I still didn't get her Grace Kelly's character's name. I didn't get it. I know I'm bad. But she really has no issues getting her hands dirty. He's getting distracted, dude. Keep your eyes on them. Poor thing. Stella was wrong about Miss Lonely Hearts. She's literally writing, like, a note. Why aren't we... Why aren't we helping Miss Lonely Heart right now? Look how big that hole is. What is it? What is it? It's nothing. Lisa, what are you doing? What is she doing? Bro, she is ballsy. <laughs> I would not be doing any of this. But she's doing it not only in a dress, but in heels, queen. I see you, boo. What? What? It's empty! <laughs> it's empty! Better keep a lookout. Better keep a lookout. Wow, she is a badass. Oh my god, she's lonely, huh? She literally wrote... Oh, call the police. The music stopped her. <gasps> oh my god, he's, he's coming back! Oh my god, in the room! He's gonna notice that the handbag is out of his freaking suitcase. Oh my god. And she revealed herself. What is she doing? <gasps> oh my god. This, I, my hands are literally sweating. Okay, now he's assaulting me. 
There's nothing you can do because you're sitting in the freaking chair. <gasps> Go run to her. At least tell Stella to run to her. Now I'm, I'm second guessing my first theory there. That he didn't commit murder. But she did break into his house. So, you know, I don't know what it is about the, the lack of dialogue and really getting to see it in action. That makes it more intriguing to watch. And I also love that Lisa is part of this this scene. I just think it's it's just so intriguing. She took the wedding ring and he sees. Whoa, he's looking right at you with his beautiful blue eyes. That, you were so obvious. Now he knows that you're watching him. How much do you have? 50 cents. Here, take this. Look, I got $20 to sell in my purse. Give me what you got. What about the rest? Those cops see you. He knows. He's coming. <laughs> he is coming to your apartment. And Jeff, he's defenseless. He's in a freaking wheelchair. Oh my God, he's coming to your door. It's a done deal, bro. This is why you don't just leave people alone. I think I said that in the last video. Just leave people alone. Oh my God, and there's stairs there, he's screwed. Oh my God. You can hear his footsteps coming up the stairs. Bro, it's a done deal, bro. Oh my God, there he is. Love the lighting on his eyes, wow. It looks as beautiful in color as it would in black and white. I love that this scene is also shot in shadow. Very, very, it keeps us in the dark as well as the character. Your friend, the girl, could have turned me in. Why didn't she? Can you get me that ring back? No. no. Can't the police have it by now? Oh my God. He's gonna throw him out the window. Don't throw him out the window. I can't take any more people falling out of the window, okay? Laser! Doyle! <gasps> run, run, hurry! <laughs> oh no! Oh my God, he's gonna throw him out the window. <gasps> Okay, now everyone can see this, all right? We know that he's doing something. Oh my god. No. Just hold on. Hold on, James. Hold on. Oh. Why do I... Oh my god, he fell out of the window. Is his, is his leg okay? Yeah, I'm proud of you. Thorwald's ready to take us on a tour of the East River. Want to look? No, thanks. I don't want any part of it. Any part of it? <laughs> wow. So he did kill his wife. Oh, and she fell in love with the with the piano dude. That is so sweet. And I can see that she's also wearing green. Green was kind of her color there. She got a new dog. Oh, this is so sweet. The dancer is still dancing. That's her man. Oh. That is so sweet. And he broke his other leg. <laughs> oh, that sucks. But I mean, at least he solved the murder. Oh my God, what a fun movie, wow. That was really good. Why is there like a trend that people keep falling out of windows? Okay, this is the second time we've seen that this month or maybe the third time, I don't even know. I really loved James Stewart and Grace Kelly in this film because again, they were like, their energies were very harmonious throughout the scenes. Like one was not overpowering the other. They were really letting each other share the screen. And then I also really liked seeing the layers being peeled back of Lisa's character, um, being able to kind of see her go from this like city girl who's very much into fashion and works in that industry. And Jeffries is like, oh, you know, you're perfect, but you're just not perfect for me. But then seeing her kind of adapt to that way of life of sleuthing and getting nitty gritty and down in the dirt, you know what I mean? So I really love seeing that depth to her character. Overall, I think that I would give this film... Oh, you know what? Before I even go there, we have to talk about the ending. The ending was so like on the edge of my seat, like what's going to happen, you know? I thought that there was going to be more to play at it, like um, that the man didn't kill his wife, that there was something else going on. But right at the end there, we really got like all the suspense, what was going to happen. Oh my God, he was like in the apartment going to hurt Jeffries. It was just, 
it was there, you know? So we really got a lot of different layers of Hitchcock's work and his skill in this film. Um, the romance, the suspense, the mystery. It was fantastic. I think I would definitely give this film a 10 out of 10. It was so great. Thank you guys so much for watching it with me. All right, everyone, that does it for this video. As always, if you liked it as much as I did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the loop. All right, everyone, if you want the full reaction of this film, it is up on Patreon, available exclusively to our Golden Oscar patrons. And in the next video, we are going to be watching a Hitchcock film that I have been really excited to watch. We are going to be watching North by Northwest. Now I'm so excited to watch this film, mostly because of Cary Grant, okay? I feel like we did really good with James Stewart. Now it's time to give some love and attention to our sweet, sweet Carrie. And I cannot wait to see him in this film. If you haven't seen North by Northwest, then I highly encourage you to either check it out in its entirety or just check a quick synopsis of it online. Then come back with all of your movie facts and your movie insights. And we are going to talk about it in the comment box below. If you have any recommendations of any classic Hollywood films, we do have a recommendation form. Go ahead and check that out. It's in the description box. Guys, this is always such a pleasure. Thank Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, for donating. You guys literally have made this experience so much fun. So thank you so much. Please stay safe and healthy out there and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye everybody. Psychological mystery thriller. That's what I had written on my script. Did I say that? No, sure didn't. <laughs> Let's try it for the first take, take one. I have to read it really quick actually. I wish I could do this entire intro in a British accent, but I feel like I would offend a lot of uh, British people, <laughs> so I'm not going to do that, but I wish I could. Written by a little, little, little. why do I want to say Wol Wolrish Irish? <laughs> Irish, aka Corey, Corey? Who's Corey? <laughs> Cornell Mia, not Corey. What? Wasserman. What a last name. Wasserman playing in their respective read, read lows. <laughs> Lead roles. <laughs>